upright and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. So that's the passage that uh, uh, I've been reading and uh, something I wanted to share this morning before we begin our time in prayer. With that said, uh, let me assign some people to pray for certain things. So I'm going to look on the screen here. And uh, Sister Annette, are you are you able to pray or are you there? For... I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I'm perfect. here. Excellent. Excellent. If you can pray for um, um, let me see here. If you can pray for uh, just thanking God for Women's History Month um, with the contributions of many different women uh, around the world, if you can pray for that as well as you as you can if you can pray for the Lenten season uh, 2024 um, fast that modified Daniel fast that we're in and for our congregational goals. So Women's History Month and the, and the Lenten uh, fast. If I can also have um. Who else is on? Sister, is on. Mm -hmm. Sister Birdie. Are you able to pray, Sister Birdie? Linda yes, Easton I'm is sorry. on. I'm sorry, I was moved. I'm sorry. Yes, I can. Is that was that Sister Birdie? Yes. Okay. If you can pray for um the nas the the nation the crisis that's going on in Haiti right now, um, mm -hmm. if you can ask for God's help and God's uh, comfort in that, Sister Easter, if you can pray uh, for some of our sick and shut-ins, and so um, and I got a list from Pastor Stewart here. If you can pray for the Reverend Barry Holly, who's needing long-term care, if you can also pray for Dr. Gregory Hardaway. Uh, from Resurrection Church in Chicago, um, Pastor Stewart uh, is, a is a colleague of Pastor Stewart's. He was diagnosed with throat cancer. So if you can pray for, for him. And if you can also pray for uh, Julia Johnson, my mom as well, uh, who ha is in the hospital right now as well. So the Reverend Barry Holly, Dr. Gregory Hardaway, and then Julia Johnson. So Sister Easter, if you can pray for those three people. Um, brother Rod, brother Rod, are you able to pray for us? You're here in the chapel with us. Um, so, um, if you can pray for our, our purpose and vision and our values as our church, as a church, um, and then I will conclude our time in prayer, uh, and I'll mix in a praise report as well, um, praying for a uh, praise report for sister Smith for being able to be home from the hospital. And then I also will pray for some of those that are bereaved and those that have um, funerals and home going celebrations coming up. I'll pray for that as well. Um, before we start, is there any prayer requests or anything that I may be missing that we want to be in prayer about? I'd like to ask uh, for challenges. Um, Harry. Go ahead, Sister Annette. We pray for uh, the upcoming uh, birthday celebration for Sister Viola Jenkins. She will be ret uh, turning 100 years old at the end of the month. So we are giving her a celebration at church Saturday. So we just pray that all goes well and her health will sustain her. Okay, absolutely. I'll, I'll definitely add that into the praise, my praise. Thank you. values all right well let's go ahead and begin our time in prayer sister Annette if you want to start us off that'd be great okay our heavenly father as we come as I look at um, Psalms 92 it tells us how good it is to give thanks to you O Lord 
to sing in your honor, O most high God, to proclaim your constant love every morning and your faithfulness every night with the music of strings and instrument and with melody on the harps. And as I uh, think about the um, praying for the Women's uh, History Month, I think about how far, how far have the women's come through this ages and time. Uh, God is good. He allowed uh, women to come from being quiet and covered up to being pastors and politicians and all of that. We just thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you that they're um, become some of them good mothers and good uh, wives and good uh, daughters. We just thank you, Lord, for um, the win this history of the Women Month and the contributions they have made to this society. We continue to ask you to uplift them and give us the strength to carry on because we know that a wailing prayers from the women's is a mighty, mighty thing. And Lord, we just um, thank you for that. We thank you for giving us the space and, and, and time to uh, be lifted up in your name. And as uh, we go in, as we are in our Lenten season, Lord, we uh, uh, just thank you for that, that we are able to see another Lenten season. We thank you, Lord, for allowing uh, those to stay on track with the uh, uh, Daniel Fast diet. Um, some have fallen off of the wagon, some are still on there. We just thank you, Lord. But most of all, as all of this is going on, uh, we just ask that you uh, let our mind be open to the things that you want us to see and do. And um, whether it's food or whether it's um, something that we're dealing with spiritually, physically, or whatever, Lord, you know all about our needs and our concerns and all of that. Father God, we just thank you that uh, for that. We ask that you um, go with FIBC. Uh, pastor and his congregation, um, the staff, and all, all of those that make up um, the um, staff at FIBC to make the church go smooth. We thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, sometimes as um, the leadership might get a little weary and um, not feeling that they are doing what they should, and we know that you put them there and we ask that you give them the strength and the uh, courage and the faith to keep moving forward and uh, stay in the race because we know that it's not for man that we are doing these things, but it's for the glory of God. We just ask that you just keep us that way. And uh, as a reminder, let us be conscious of um, our action and um, our love toward one another. We ask that you go with us, Lord, and keep us in your care. And, and Lord, we ask that you uh, look upon us as we go into the, um, the study of Titus this morning. We ask you to bless our uh, facilitator, uh, um, give him the wisdom and understanding to deliver the um, message to us this morning, what you would have him to do. Go with him and his family. Go with our senior pastor and his family. We ask these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. God bless and amen. Holy Father, we come into your presence once again, grateful that you are our Father. You made us welcome to bring all of our cares and concerns to you. We promise that you would listen and you would hear us. We thank you for that, Father, and we're praying now for our sisters and brothers in Haiti. We know that there are many of your people, many believers of you in Haiti, and we're praying especially for those first, Lord, that you would calm their fears and that you would turn them towards you in prayer, sincere prayer. Wipe away those fears, Lord. Help them to know that even in this situation, that you are still with them, no matter what the circumstances look like. Help them to know 
that you are the all-powerful, all-loving God that is with them whatever they're going through. Calm their fears, Lord. And, Lord, touch the hearts of those people who are causing all the confusion. They're living in fear. They're living in hate. And only you, God, can remove that feeling from them that they are not being cared for that makes them feel like they have to destroy everything because it's not benefiting them. Lord, they are still your creation, and you can reach them when no one else can. So, Father, I'm praying that you bring about the peace that is needed there because, Lord, it's Satan who's trying to stir everybody up against everybody else. But you have all power over Satan. So I'm praying, that Lord, that you would touch the hearts of your people so that they would turn to you because you promised if they turn to you that you would answer. And we believe this, Father. We believe it for them, and I'm praying, Lord, that you would stir up that feeling of faith in each of them now while that world seems to be falling apart. I pray and ask all of this in your name, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Isaiah 65 and 24 says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. So, Father God Almighty, uh, we come before you uh, with a heart full of gratitude and a humility. Lord, we acknowledge that you are your unfailing presence in our lives. And, and for you are the great Jehovah. You are our rose of Sharon. You are the lily of the valley. You are our bright and morning star. Oh, I could go on and on about who you are and what you are. Holy is your name. We, we acknowledge your unfailing presence in our lives. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are our refuge and our fortress, a constant source of courage. Thank you for being our rock and our salvation. Thank you for being our ever-present help in the time of trouble. Oh, glory to your name. Lord, we thank you for your love and your faithfulness to us, even when we are not faithful to you. The songwriter says, all my life, you have been faithful. Oh, good goodness. Oh, the goodness of God. And so thank you for forgiving us when we sin and ask for forgiveness. Lord, we love you. We love you for your mercy never ends. Your, your mercy endures forever and ever. And so now we come, uh, Lord, as we do every Wednesday and gather together on Zoom and then those that are present there in the, the house of worship. And, and we come together as saints, being on one accord to pray and to lift up before you all of our concerns and our needs and the needs of others. We come because you said where two or three gather together in your name, you would be in the midst. And you didn't stop there. You also went on to tell us that if my people who are called mm -hmm. by my name, oh, glory to God. You said it, it, if they shall humble themselves, they come down, come down off of that high ladder that you're on and humble yourself as a child humbles himself before his father and pray and show enough pray. Not, not just saying words as the Pharisees said it, but show enough praying and seek your faith and turn. That means we're going to stop doing the things that we shouldn't be doing. Turn from our wicked ways. Then and only then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal our, our land. Our land need healing. Lord, mm -hmm. before we start asking for even more things, we want to ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive us for every wrong doing for things that we said that we shouldn't have said and then failing to do some things you told us to do. Lord, we, we're sorry that when you told us to go right, we went left. Now, Lord, we lift up before you. We lift up before you the sick, the sick and the shut-in. 
Lord, uh, we are given uh, you who are the giver of life and 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 health and and, and comfort, and we are we are putting them all in your hand. You can, you can uh, lift them up when they are down. And so Jeremiah, I believe uh, chapter 17 says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. And so Lord, we are lifting up Reverend uh, uh, Barry Holly. Well, you know, you know what the situation is, God. And so we'll put it in your hands because you can take care of it better than any of us can. And, and, and Dr. Gregory Hart, Hardaway, God, you see him, you know what the situation is, and there's nothing too hard for you, nothing. The question was asked, is there anything too hard for our God? And the answer came back, no, there's nothing too hard for you. No matter what he's going through, God, right now, you can heal, and he can be a testimony when he get up of your healing power. And then, God, we, lift, we give to you Julia Johnson, who is in the hospital, God. You're there also. You're right there in the hospital. That is you are We're here with us, God. And so touch your body, God. Touch it. Touch it from the crowns of her head to the soles of her feet. And God, remove whatever is there that's ailing her, God. And that she can get up. She can get up and she can walk around and she can tell us all. It, it, it wasn't the doctor. Even though you were working, God was working through the doctor. It was God. It was God who healed mm -hmm. me. And, 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 and no matter what the doctor say, we are listening to the, the, what the doctor Jesus said, what he said. And he said he's a healer. The, the elder said there is enough healing in the, in the um, in hem of his garment to heal a nation mm -hmm. so he can heal. And so we're lifting them up, all of them before you, God. We're placing them in your hand. And, and, and we are asking for physical healing. If there be some mentally healed, that the healing mentally, that you can do that too. That there is nothing too hard for you. And so God, uh, uh, we thank you. We thank you for but being such a loving, such a good father. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to come before your throne of grace and mercy. And when you come, you promise, when we come, you promise that you would listen to us, that you would listen to us and you would heed to our petition. So Lord, we thank you. Lord, we pray that, that hearts and minds are open and they are prepared to receive of what you have for us in the study of Titus today. That's everyone that's on Zoom. I don't know what they stand in need of, but you do. There may be someone that is ill, that, that, but they are, they're tuning in because they want to hear the word. And so we ask you to bless everyone. Bless like only you can. Bless and empower Pastor Stewart and, and Pastor Tally as they teach. Bless them and their family with the blessing that they need. So Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You are welcome mm -hmm. in this time, in this prayer time, in this Bible study time. Have your way. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We magnify and we honor you. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Those are some interesting things that I think this speaks directly to the older saints that we have here at FIBC. Um, so older men, it says that they need to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith and love and steadfastness. Um, we have that word self-controlled there that also appears when it talks about the qualifications of a pastor or elder. So whether you're a pastor or elder, uh, self-controlled is one of those virtues, one of those attributes that no matter what people should have, period. Um, but it also has this idea of being sober-minded. And I think this is interesting too, because that is also you uh, mentioned as well. Um, so I guess I want to start by saying when we talk about older men, specifically just the older men, um, what does this look like practically? What does this look like practically? In the idea of if these are qualities, if these are characteristics that older men should have. So we read that, we see that, okay? But 
as we put flesh on the bones of this, what do you think these qualities, what do they look like? What would you what, what would you say? Anybody got any ideas or, or thoughts or comments? And those that are also online, you can feel free to uh, to jump in as well. Yep. Let me give you the mic one second. Good evening, everybody. So you said um, what qualities is these, what they look like, so to speak. So for me, this book of Titus is, is a guidance book for me. And I've read it throughout my life for some time now. And then when it came to that sober part, um, what it looks like, the sober part to me looks like, because when I first read it, I think about sober as being like from narcotics or whatever, but it's like free of any kind of stress, anything that's going wrong and you're like unbalanced in your life. So that right there is really what keyed me out to, I can speak on that one right there. Excellent, thanks for sharing. Others. What do these qualities look like if you had to put more flesh onto the bones of them? What would you say? Uh, in the in one of the versions of the New Revised Standard Version, uh, the sober-minded is is used temperate, temperate. Um, and temperate has with it the characteristic of knowing how to make good decisions, how to use wisdom and prudence in making decisions. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Pastor, Go Pastor ahead. Tom? Yep. You know, I think that uh, when I think about it, I'm, and maybe I'm not going into uh, men as much as women. But men too, being willing to accept the responsibility of your age and being willing to move from one age level to the next. Sometimes people try to hold on to stages in their life that they should be moved out of. Um, Ecclesiastes says to everything there's a season. And so sometimes we try, uh, men and women, but they try to hold on to a season that they are past, and if they take on the responsibility of the season they were now in, then they could be the leaders that we need. Gotcha. Okay, good, good. So we have, uh, thank you for sharing. So we have the older men, but now we have, I want to go over to older women. To that, I got a very relevant question. I mean, as relevant, hot off the press. So the question I want to <laughs> ask those in the Bible study how would you measure the two front running candidates for president of the United States to these standards objecti objectively? So if, 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 um, if, uh, if, if, if Paul is saying that, that Christian men should be sober minded, dignified, self control, sound in faith, steadfastness, how would you me measure the two? men who are the front runners, which would be Donald Trump and um, Joe Biden, objectively. Don't, don't, don't bring in your, try and don't be subjective, but how would you measure them objectively and which, which, which one has more of the qualities of, of, based on your observation? Oh, we got okay, somebody. somebody on the chat. Okay, sorry. Um... Good morning, Sister Easter. Uh, so we have faithful can be counted on. If you say you are going to do something, do it to the best of your ability. Okay, I like that. Thank you, Sister Easter. Reverend Sell says, no contest. Biden <laughs> exams more. <laughs> so, so, so are you saying then, Reverend Sells, that Biden, uh, based on your observations, is is more sober minded. He's more dignified, self controlled, uh, sound in faith, and steadfast. I'm just. Is that what you're saying? That's what it seems like she's saying. Um, okay. At least from what. Oh, she. Yeah. Yes. She yes. put yes in capital letters. By the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Somebody else. Okay. Somebody else. Uh, Sister Cook said Trump is none of them, and President Biden have all the qualities. Okay. Okay. So, anybody, any anybody in house? Yes, sir. 
I would say um, objectively, uh, the sound and faith, because um, Wh which one? It, neither one of them have it to me. Oh, yeah. say more about that. Because Good. it's like um, uh, to have a godly view to rule a nation, you should have a you should have a godly view in some aspects of whatever you're performing. And I just don't see God working, them expressing God in none of their ways, what they're doing things in. Wow, that certainly was objective. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Someone else in the in the in here uh, online in the comments. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that question, but we certainly want to. I want to try to make it relevant since, since that's the whole issue of two older men who are run. And interesting. Uh, uh, and I'm not getting political, uh, uh, but I watch. Um, the CBS guy, the, the late night guy, whatever his name is, Colbert. Stephen Colbert. He, uh, he had Bernie Sanders on last night. And Bernie Sanders is a year older than Joe Biden, but there's a difference in night and day in Bernie Sanders. I mean, he is quick. He He's on everything. He's, I mean, I mean, and he is a year older than Joe Biden, but he's much more sharp in appearance. Well, you can speak your mind. You can speak your mind when you don't have response. Now, pastor, you're pastor of FIBC, and you cannot be as verbal and as, as if you had did not have a church. If you were just out there can speak exactly what you say, but when you speak, you know that you represent FIBC. So when you have a responsibility, you have to think twice who would I be offending if I said this? What does the various members, different members of my church expect from me when, as I represent them? So you would be more cautious with your speech than if you didn't have a congregation that you had to respond to. Yes, okay, but and, and, and I wanna make sure I understand you correctly. Were you responding to the comparison I gave to Sanders and Biden. To Bernie Sanders, yes, exactly. If you don't have a, a responsible constituent that you have to have to know that you're answering to, and right. and Biden is answering to a very split constituency: sure, sure. young people, old people, Christian, Jewish people, Muslim people, black people, white people. He has to make sure that what he says comes out of his mouth is not going to offend any one of them. Right. So you have to be slow, to, slow to speak. Right. <laughs> okay. But my my comment, to be clear, was not on what what each of them said, but, but how, how quickly they said it. The sharpness. The anyway. Okay. So we're gonna move on. Let's move on. That's good. I think Sister Sister Grant said that none of them exhibit that. And then Sister, uh, Sister Issa, uh, go ahead with your question. I think I saw your hand. No, that's okay. I, I, Sister Birdie uh, said some of the things that I would have said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Excellent, excellent. All right. So Paul talks about quality, qualities of older men. Now he shifts over and talks about qualities of older women. And here's some of the different things that he says. Uh, reverend in behavior. Not slanderers, slaves to not slaves to wine, teach what is good and able to train young women to love their husbands. And so I want to just pause right here and just, you know, um, I want to I think this is a good question that we can kind of talk about. Well, I guess one just observationally wise, I don't know why. It, why, why didn't Paul put the the not not slanderers with the older older men? Uh, why do you, why do you put that with the older women? I don't know why he, why he did that. Anybody got any option? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, I just it's an observation. I just thought that was interesting. But he says uh, he says not not slanderers, not slaves to wine. I think you better be careful, Reverend. He said observationally, observationally. <laughs> Observationally, you know, I'm just, I'm just reading the text, Doc. I think you better be <laughs> um, so anyway, so but 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 going back to that, I mean, not slandering, I mean, yes, that that goes for men and women, right? We're not we don't necessarily want to single anybody out, and I think that that's something that is 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 important. But I guess I want to ask this question: What does it look like 
and I love to hear the women in the room and on the chat be able to speak to this. When Paul says, help train young women to love their husbands, what does that mean? What does that look like? As, as older women, how would y'all respond if you had a younger woman in your life that you were trying to help train, if you will, what does that look like? I would love to hear from the older women in this context. Well, excuse me for this question. Well, okay, I am 83 years old. I did have a husband uh, for almost 46 years. And uh, I do realize that as and as an older woman who's had the ex experience to share to share with the young young women that they are responsible for loving their husbands and their children and 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 set a good example you just can't talk about you know that oh i love my husband or or you know anything like that. You have to set an example uh, in your home and in public that you that you um, that you love your husband. You're not a slave to him. He's not your boss. He's the head of the house. And so that's meaning that he don't boss you, but you equally share responsibility and if it comes down to him or her in, in my in my marriage I uh as far as as far as uh maybe disagreeing at the end we would agree but if it, if, it, if it was his way fine you know because he's the head of the house you just said something I, I want to I have another question to follow up on that but before we get to that I'll get back to that Others. Yes, I think um, to teach younger women to be more supportive of their husbands, as far as not tearing them down a lot, criticizing mm -hmm. too much, and build them and mm -hmm. building them up, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, as a black man, they already go through enough out there in the mm -hmm. world and in their home they should feel like they're somebody lifted up by their wives and the younger women doesn't have to be so like rebellious or going toe to toe with them as much and mm -hmm. how to just support them. And like sister Vivian said, but not being a slave to them, but they don't have to be like so competitive with them. Sister Diaz, I see your hand on the chat. Go ahead. Well, for me, um, I have three daughters. And the older that I got and the more my word, you know, when it comes to my daughters, um, two of them are married. Well, one's married and one lives with her. I always try to point out mental health with men. That has been something that has been heavily on my heart. And as older women, we we start to understand the toll when we look at a man of what they carry and how so that we are mindful of the things that we say. We're mindful of how we treat that man because they carry a lot. So to me, when I look at my relationship, I look at that as how can I help? How do I be an encouragement? How do I be something positive? How do I know how to listen and uplift? Because when I was raising my girls, you know, women have, a, women can, cut the reason they say slanderous we can cut with our words and a woman has no problem cutting with her words so that slanderous part I know was for me and as I learned to not be that way I was able to get my daughters to understand treat in love even if it doesn't look treat in love because you can actually get more by loving on a man that is hurt and and tr trying to put yourself in their shoes just to be a better you know, help me. Got you. So sister woman, I want to go back to your question. Cause you, well, you made a comment and you said you brought the idea of headship. 
the man is the head. That's what you, the head of the household. Okay. And then you said that when there's decisions, you know, in the end, y'all will agree, but the, the woman would just follow. So I just want to bring that up and say, is there ever a situation where, let's say the husband and the wife are in disagreement about something? And let's say the wife has a particular, I think we should do this. The husband thinks we should do this. Is there ever a situation where the husband should say, you know what? I'm going to actually follow or listen you listen to you in this situation because I think, even though I think this, I think I'm gonna go with you, even though the to your point, the man is the is the head. Is there ever in other words, is there ever a time that the man should submit to the woman? That's my question. Um well, I would think if let's say the the woman was a single mom and got married to the man and you know there was a decision about the child that he might not be aware of certain histories certain ways that the child is as far as personality goes or just kind of you know the mom knows the kid a lot better so I think that would be a good way you know as far as like school decision or medical decision like if I ever get married I'm a single mom if I ever get married I would love to have his support and understanding and trust that you know I know what is best as far as for my child but I would want to ask for his input to see if maybe there's something that could be better or you know tweaks so that way it makes everything work for everybody but I would say that's for me one of the only things I would hope that my husband would trust me as far as, you know, hey, you know your daughter much better than I do. I'm still learning, so we'll go with what you say. But so uh could I just say could I just say please, could we just rid ourselves of that word submit and change it with come into agreement with? Because the submit is 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 almost like um going against your own wishes. But if you if you can talk and come to an agreement that this is the best solution, now I I've, my husband I was married for thirty one years, and most of the business decisions were made by me because my husband trusted my uh, knowledge and, and and intelligence about business. He wouldn't do anything but let me check with Bertie because he trusted me, and the other things I trusted him in. So it's a matter of not submission but just working together. I tell my children all the time, a man makes a wife and a wife makes a husband. It's what you contribute to each to build that person up. A man makes a wife and a wife makes a husband. Okay, that's 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 a good perspective there. Thank you, Sister Birdie. We got some people in the chat. Um, Sister Harrison said, why didn't he put for the men to love their woman? observational as well good i like that's a good that's a good question uh we have someone said that yes the woman may have more knowledge of of the issue um i think that was referring to what Aliyah was saying in terms of different things with the with the with the children and then somebody uh, sister carol said good point sister birdie uh, go ahead pastor so the question i wanted to raise and and i'm going to make an arbitrary division of age in the house uh i don't know who's on the everybody's who's on on uh, line but i'm gonna have 50 uh, under 50 being considered young and over 50 not so young so here's the question <laughs> I, and they'll do that <laughs> under, under 50 that i know of so many churches no longer have deaconesses mother's boards and and general mission so how will older women influence younger women today and i want to hear from lucy and i want to hear from Aaliyah. and if there's anybody else under 50 online then i want to hear from the older women so again the question is and for those who don't know uh the deaconesses were the wives of deacons before we ordained both male and female deacons Mother's boards were the older mothers who used to sit on behind the deacon on the second row in white, and they kind of gave direction to the younger women. And the general mission, we still have a general mission 
uh, but we don't have young matrons anymore. We don't have young maids, uh, you know, so there are not a, a lot of young people. Usually people get involved in that when they get older. So I want to ask Lucy, we haven't heard from Lucy, my administrative assistant, and the person who spoke a while ago was Aaliyah, our operations administrative assistant. So since you two are under 50, uh, how do you think older women should influence younger women in the church? Microphone. Um, I don't, I mean, it's like they're role models. I mean, we, I don't know, we mimic what they do. They, they have high standards, I guess, as far as, you know, um, us following them. I don't know. I I haven't been to church in a long time, so it's hard to to say. But for me, like my grandma was was in the church a lot. So her reading the Bible, following the word of God, um, and just you know, being being a wife, being a mom, being a grandmother. So I think that that okay. So your grandmother who was in church. Was yes. was okay, Aaliyah. She is in church actively. Um, I I know that outreach and small groups are a really good way for um older women to have that space to be able to ask you know be asked questions and get advice. Um, I know that with a lot of small groups, um. If they're not at church, they're usually in the person's home. Um, so it creates more of a warm atmosphere, creates more of a comfortable atmosphere. Um, I know for me, I have an issue with childcare. So if, you know, they're, you know, welcome children, you know, of a certain age and um, a lot of them provide food, you know, just a place of, you know, community. Um, I think it doesn't always have to be in the church building. Um, definitely, you know, take it back to how it was back when the early church started out of, you know, homes and um, community outreach. Like we were talking, me and Pastor Teller yesterday were talking about um, a outreach group called Young Lives. They minister to teen mothers. And that's one of the great ways for the older women to be able to be available for advice. And they were my age now, you know, they're in their late twenties, early thirties, but we also had their mothers, their aunts were helping. So I think just having that outreach and, and so, so the, one question, I'll go to the older women. Uh, so, so do you look to older women in the church to be role models? Um, yes. Most of them are in my family. They all go to church, but I look to my older aunts, um, my mom, um, my friends, parents, you know, um, I haven't really met too many in my church. Um, I have I haven't had the opportunity to go to the groups just because of scheduling and childcare. But um, I would love to be able to connect with the ones that you know have been married for 40, 50 years, or who have been mothers for you know to three, four kids and have grandkids. Because there's a lot of advice that I know I could get from them to be able to do things in a godly way. Okay, so. thank you. So the question now to the older women, uh, in light of us not having the mother's board and deaconesses and, and uh, general mission that reaches down, uh, 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 how can we influence young women in the church? Yes, Chaplain. We're going to yield to the women first, sir. <laughs> I think here at First Institutional that the marriage ministry is very instrumental with that because you it's a mixture of younger couples as well as older couples. And there's a real sense of openness and honesty that takes place in that class, transparency mm -hmm. that speaks to, yeah, I've been there, done that, and I can tell you not to what you can do to make it better. <laughs> it, uh, 
Okay. Anybody else on the chat on the chat too? You can. Pastor Sally. So I would say this is Regina. Um, our Monday night women's Bible study. I'm actually 50, so I'm on that. <laughs> I'm oh, at yeah, that age. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Transition. that the women on um the in the on our Monday night Bible study we have been excellent resources. And if anybody is young. I mean, I learn a lot. I still have a lot of to learn, but there's so much wisdom that even if you're just listening on a Zoom, it's those life experiences. I've learned a lot from the women in our one at First Institute. I thank God for our Monday night Bible studies. I think we all feel empowered in not only do the older teach us younger, but sometimes the younger teach the older as well. Could I say also that the older women can uh, reach out. Don't wait for the younger women to ask or come to you. When you see younger women, encourage them and reach out. And uh, for years, I, I was known, if anyone asked me, I'm, this is Sister Birdie, and I've been around a long time, and they asked me to take, uh, do, do something, I will say, I'll find someone for you. And I'll usually find a, a younger person and encourage them to, to be able to uh, take that take that role or speaking out or reading the scriptures, I just encourage and bring them in because they're not, sometimes they won't come in unless they're asked in. Uh, that's, Sister Bertie took part of what I wanted to say. Yeah, be free. I'm sorry. Uh, may, you know, let them know that you're interested in them and speak to them. And like what I do, it's hard for me to remember names, whether they're young or old, but you see the young young folks, they have these names are so difficult. You just can't remember that. So I would tell them, you know what? I'm, I, I'm, I don't want to disrespect you or anything, but when you see me and I look, uh, have a blank look on my face, tell me your name. Cause I, I'm trying to remember it. So, you know, j just be open, be open with them, be honest with them. Cause I sure, I can't, I can't remember names, period. <laughs> Reverend Staten, and then we're going to move on. I think that when we say role model, we have to remember that these young people, we used to be young, young once. And for us to be so mean, and, and, and it's like we treat them like, uh, it's like my granddaughter came to me crying. She was upset because the way she was approached, I mean, we used to dress like they dressed. We used to do what they did. We have to remember that we did the same thing. We're just too old to do it now. We probably want to do it, but can't. Well, 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 I, I take issue. I don't know. I remember the, the high school girls when I was high school. They didn't show as much as the ones now. I mean, oh. now is it's much more open. I mean, it's it's it, the, the, but, the, the, the measurement of of What's the word I want to use? The measurement. The length of the dress. No, no, not the dress, but I mean the modesty. The mod, yeah, right. that, that's yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, this what is acceptable has changed. Yes, that's right. But Pastor, yes. what you have to remember is the way you approach a person. Yes. Yeah, you, oh, I agree with that. I mean, yes. I say things to my grandkids saying, "My goodness, did you forget to wear you know, you know the rest of your dress, or is you know you just wore a blouse today?" <laughs> But the thing is, it's the way we approach them. Yes, yes And we much. have to learn that it's, I say, it's the way you, you can say anything to a person, but it's the way you frame it. it so that's, the, you know, how they can, they take it. Yes. And so I, because I had a, one of the men come to me and said, oh, Miss Rumstaden, those are some of the meanest women. And I'm like, sure. So we don't want yeah. that. We yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the attitude and the way right. you say it, not yet. Okay, okay. So, so, so now we move to the younger women and Pastor Tal and I agreed that he would deal with the older men and older women. I would deal with the younger women so because, because we're flipping. Uh, so uh, uh, it, it reads in with, beginning with verse uh, four of the second chapter. So that, uh, let me see, uh, uh, let me see, what young women, uh, what, what are we getting on that? I'm, Yes, yes, okay. So that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be self-controlled, chaste, good managers of the household, kind, 
uh, being submissive to the husband is a word that says the brother doesn't like, uh, so that the word of God may be may not be discredited. So the the uh, characteristics that Pastor Talley has mentioned in our study here for the younger women, uh, lovers of their husbands, be self controlled, pure, working at home. Uh oh, working at home. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. That's a culturally uh, explosive term. Uh, kind and submissive to the husband. Uh, and he says, but what does this look like practically? So, 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 so in addition to that, so my question is, in what ways might Paul's instructions on younger women be relevant or irrelevant to 21st century younger Christian women? Again, in what ways might Paul's instructions on younger women be relevant or irrelevant to, and this is open to males or females, to 21st century younger Christian women. For example, uh, 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 submissive to the husband. It is proven that a lot of younger women are not getting married, so they don't have husbands. Uh, that's one. And and uh, uh, before COVID sent us all working at home, uh, most women before COVID did not work at home. They worked out of the home. So again, how can this teaching by Paul for younger women, I, I'm not saying to change it, but be relevant, make sure it's relevant in the 21st century? Um, maybe one word. I know submissive is kind of one of those uh, emotionally charged words. And so um, it is one of them words that's emotionally charged. However, it is still in the Bible but maybe a better way of translating that instead of submissive is maybe more of respecting, uh, honoring. I think that's yeah. probably a better well, translation yeah. Yeah. in well, regards to that. Well, a few moments ago, when, when Sister Birdie spoke, spoke, I went to the, the Greek New Testament word submitting, and it is not good. She's not going to like it. It says to be under. <laughs> that, that's what the word literally means in the Greek New Testament to be under. So, I mean, I'm, I, yeah, I just, I, I just, I would look it up. <laughs> Dr. Watson, you go, yeah, so what happened? Well, Pastor, if you want the women to be under, you have to do an, a really superb job on the men so that they will treat and be prepared to have someone under them and know how to relate to that person. So that person will see, still feel that they have value. That man has got to be really, really smart to be over someone and still have that person be happy to be in relationship with them. You got to be a real good man in every area to know how to relate to someone that is under you. esteemed pastor come up with the Greek translation of it. I remember working through some sitting in on marriage uh, uh, classes and studying uh, Paul and all, uh, and that submission word kept coming up. And I remember it was during one of the camps, something prompted us to look at like the Merriam-Webster dictionary. And you know how every word's got about one, two, three, four, five different uh, versions of a similar idea it might have been like under submit under submission number four or five was willing cooperation and that mm -hmm. was the one that kind of got us through our little mm -hmm. pit, go toe to toe i heard very good yeah mm -hmm. so that took the heat off of that word where i whenever mm -hmm. we had conversations regarding or it came up in Bible study of submission that our working definition of it was willing cooperation and, and good good yeah and, and as somebody gets ready to speak Dr. Watson what we but we must we 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 we, we cannot be what is called anachronistic and going back in time and changing the culture in those days women didn't work out of the home the man was the only one who worked in the home and made the money and the woman was to, to raise the children. So uh, maybe in that context, 
the Greek word being under because she was covered. She would co today women don't have to be covered by a man. So so just, so so uh, so let's not just totally beat up on Paul because of the word it means under without looking at the context, Doctor. Um, <clears throat> the the word submission obviously, as everybody said, is pretty emotional, but. I, I personally have no problem with the word. When I think of it in the context of being under, it means a man, a wife, let's say, or both, being under God, both of us being submitted to him. And some years ago, I did a study with P.B. Bunny Wilson, who's written some great books on submission. One is called Liberated Through Submission. And you get a whole different take on the biblical perspective and how it is applied even today. So I know I've taught in women's groups, I've taught in singles ministries, and that word is explosive. But I dare say it's not a bad word as we look at respecting each other, as some of you have said. And who are we really under? We're under Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I think somebody got uh, their hand up. Uh, feel free, is that Dr. Tarkenton? Yes, yeah, well, some of it has already been said. I, I think I would um, try to advise a younger woman uh, about how I came to a place of understanding and acceptance of that, uh, those teachings. And, and I liked, I don't know who mentioned about willing cooperation. One of the things that, you know, I'm talking to my husband, it's sort of like, you know, understand that I am allowing, I am accepting, I am doing this of free will, not that I have to, you know, because mm -hmm. as pastors pointed out and others, you know, as a, uh, a career woman working outside of the home, it wasn't because I had to do this as much as I wanted to do this. And, but the other part of it is, some as someone explained to me or said something one time that helped me is there can only be one person in charge you know can have mm -hmm. you know the two heads operating there's one person in charge and um i i because of my belief in teaching my husband was in charge however it's not that i didn't you know discuss or you know give opinion and debate and and whatever but um we finally had to come to a decision and that most often would be about um, his final decision. Unless, you know, if I found it totally unacceptable, I don't think, I think I'd go away with it. But some, we also think about the husband understanding and loving his wife and protecting and being concerned about his wife. So um, my husband actually came to a place of advising our son-in-law, happy wife, happy life. And so <laughs> it was like, you want to keep her happy so that that life at home is that. So, I mean, you know, it's a two-way street, even though you have one head uh, in the household. But I did it because I knew I had choice. And my choice was um, for, for that head to be my husband. Thank you mm -hmm. for sharing that. Um, Sister Carol in the chat said, women work out of the home as well as in the home. Our work doesn't end when we get home. And so, um, yes. Excellent discussion. Thank you all for your input. Um, Doc, you said something and I'm curious, okay, uh, when you were mentioning about the Apostle Paul and um, and the culture that we live in now, mm -hmm. um, and I know that the Scripture talks about people that um, that were made uh, Enochs of men uh, by man, um, and then those that have uh, been made Enochs by the Spirit in terms of the spirit of celibacy. So, if there are people, because uh, the Apostle Paul himself he was a single man and he didn't have the passions to be married. He didn't have that, that fire to want to be married. So my, my question is, uh, 
Is it possible that when you were talking about the older people mentoring the younger people, uh, whether it be male or female, uh, well, an older man mentoring the younger and the older woman mentoring the, the, the younger, what about for those people, um, based on what you were saying, that were uh, that are single, that don't have a desire to be married? Um, uh, because the culture that we live in now, uh, there may be people in that category that don't have a desire to be married, and then they don't care about that life. They just want to be single, whether guys or girls. Is there a mentorship available for, uh, like, say, an old... Um, have you ever run into older people that were like the Apostle Paul? Uh, in other words, that never got married, never cared about it, never had the passion. Um, and they, they, can they mentor people that are like-minded, um, that don't care about Yeah, I mean, stuff I mean, like I mean uh, yeah, I mean, God created male and female for one another uh, as social beings, but that does not exclude that some people will be single all of their lives uh and 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 a, i believe a married married persons can counsel and advise unmarried people and and unmarried adults old adults can advise married people yeah I, yeah I, I, yeah uh did, did did that help answer your question or was you, you kind of dealt with a whole bunch. You dealt with Unix, and then you you dealt with a whole bunch of stuff. That's so I'm trying to trying to understand where, where what what you're asking. Yes, Paul never was married, and Paul was given this advice. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. So Paul ne Paul never was married, and he was given this advice to married men and married older men and women on advising mar married or unmarried younger men and women. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. In other words, the future Paul and Pauline. Yes. Whether you're single or married, you should be self-controlled. You should be respectful. You should you should have dignity. You should be sober-minded. So I mean, I'm mean, yeah, and maybe more so in some cases if you're single. Yes, yes. So I think that's a good segue into about the younger men. So beginning with uh, uh, verse six, likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects a model. He talked, Paul talking to young Titus, a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity, gravity, that's a seriousness, and sound speech that cannot be censored. So you don't want to, everything come out of your mouth. You want, you want, you, you measure your words. Then any opponent would be put to shame, having nothing to evil to say of us. So uh, Pastor Talley identifies these bulleted as self-controlled, respectful, model of good works and teaching, showing integrity, dignity, and sound speech. Um, and he raises a question, what does this look like practically? I would also add, what can we do to present these role model younger Christian men to unchurched men and women. So th this may sound good for church folk, um, church, church, younger church men, but something that touched me yesterday, I, I was at a stoplight at 7th uh, Avenue and Southern, and I saw three young black men, and I almost rolled down my win window and thanked them. They looked like they were probably between 16 and 18. One was kind of dancing on the corner, but they all three of them had their pants up. No, I'm serious. 
they weren't showing their behinds. And I almost wanted to holler, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having your pants up. Because I don't get this, the young man, I see you laughing over me. I don't get the young man showing their underwear. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so that was just a footnote. So, 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 so what, what can we do to present, present these role model Christian younger men to unchurched younger men and women because their perspective on what it takes to be a successful young man you know, is totally different than the church the church i can um i want to offer a couple of things in regard to that as a as a young man myself uh, i feel like i can uh answer the question one thing i'll say and then honestly this is something that's a tapestry between older men uh younger women old like this is Probably this is across the this answer I'm going to give is across the board. I, I really feel like, and unchurch or or non or or church or non church, is it really is as simple as sharing your life with those individuals. What sharing your life means is, and obviously you know you got to be prayerful and selective on who you do that with. You can't do that with everybody, obviously, but there's some people that God may put on your heart to share your life with them, bring them into what you are already doing if that's whatever your job is, whatever your work is, whatever you have freedom and flexibility to whatever do, bring them into what you're already doing. Bring them into your home. Show them how you uh, treat your children. Show them how you treat your wife or your spouse. Show them how you work hard at work. If you have a job that you can take them to work, build relationship with them in such a way that they can actually see the good, the bad, and the ugly. And hopefully they'll be able to model the good things that you do and be able to identify those bad things and say, ah, no, nah, that's not what it is. But it comes into actually building relationship and being together versus being apart. And again, you got to use wisdom and prayerful because you can't do that with everybody. But I'm just saying, I do think in terms of older men, younger women, all of that is going to be being relational with one another in such a way that you could be able to. Uh, identify that. Um, I'm gonna go here first, and because he had his hand. Uh, I think that uh, Pastor Tally, on your model here, where it asked for a conclusion on the back page of. Uh, the sheet, when we talk about who's in charge or who's making the right decision or who's right and who's wrong and whether you're married or unmarried or whether you're young or old, I think the whole key here is what you just said, and that is let's not mistake to the understand that all of us have limitations and all of us do make mistakes and all of us cannot be right all the time. Therefore, we must rely on and be able to accept the good and the bad from each of us. I worked with young people for 40 years with the YMCA. And I want to tell you that I learned more about myself in those 40 years then I learned about them because it helped me. And I was at a luncheon just this past week and I went to this multi-million dollar company called Lolo's. I never realized that a little restaurant across the street here would one day become multi-millionaire. And the young man walked up to me and says, are you Mr. Airy? And I said, yes, but 
can you help me understand who you are? He says, well, I'm little Larry. You know where Lolo's got his name? From little Larry. Little Larry was the great grandson of Mrs. White. And he used to see me when I come in the restaurant over here and eat every day. And he said, Mr. Airy, you gave me more good things about my life than I, you ever will ever know. And I said, you want to know something? You young folks gave me a lot more than you will ever know, too. Because I learned a lot more about my wife. I learned a lot more about my son. My son even tells me things right now that I don't know. And you want to know something? The artificial intelligence is going to make all of us find a way to live and get along with those people we don't even know because they're going to become almost like us. And we're going to walk out of our door and we're going to say, was that me? So, yes, our young folks can be a very, very good price. And we must also understand that marriage can be just as important as non-marriage. And we can also understand that wives can be just as powerfully in their thoughts as husbands. And please understand that we must understand that we all have our qualities. God gave us each strengths to live our lives. And I think this message we've all learned today. Thank you and God bless. I was going to speak to this from a different point of view. When I was doing youth ministry, a lot of times when I had issues with the way the kids may be dressed, I would, I had a young lady that had on something I didn't think she should wear. And I said, why don't you pick any young man in this room and ask him what he thinks about the way you're dressed? As she picked the homeliest young man in there, <laughs> and when she asked him, he was was shy, and he said, "I think I think she's asking for something." <laughs> and girlfriend went upstairs and changed clothes. Um. I wanted to, uh, I'll be quick. Uh, there's a young man that I work with at one of my jobs and, uh, he's originally, uh, from, um, uh, um, uh, Wisconsin. And, um, there was, uh, when we were at work, a young lady came by just to speak and say hello to him. And, um, he's in his early twenties. And so, um, I know he, knows the opposite sex as far as young ladies. Um, and I, um, when I saw this particular young lady coming to see him, I said to him, I said, hey, um, have you ever thought about just um, going, like sending her a card, giving her a card, you know, just saying, thinking about you, stuff like that. And he said to me, he said, Rod, with the way that, uh, now this is his opinion now, the way that, young women are today, they would consider me to be a simp. And I said, well, wait a minute. Um, uh, short for simpleton or simple. Um, and uh, just for reaching out and being kind to somebody. And and I, I wanted to, I let him know, I said, whenever you become interested in somebody, you may seem that way but I think that that particular person will recognize you because everybody's sending text messages. What's the difference between your text message and somebody else when you can just step a little bit further and just say, how are you doing? And I know that uh, when I would talk to him, he would tell me things that he knows about her, like she's in college and what she's majoring in and um, he knows different things about her. So it already let me know that he thinks about her, even though he may know somebody else. So I wanted to let him know 
don't feel ashamed when you mm -hmm. reach out for somebody to, you know, because me being married, I was just telling him about my life and what I went through. And um, because you just don't want to be the last person to be married. You, you want to let somebody know why you did what you did, you know. And um, even if you may be viewed as simple or a simp, I just wanted to let him know you can call me Mr. Simp. Last one. Last one. Um, Pastor Tally, Pastor Stewart, I'm looking at qualities of bond servant as we finishing. Yeah. Is it okay if I make a comment? Yeah. Okay. I, I told him I wasn't going to deal with that. Oh, you weren't? I don't like Paul on that. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, I look at it this way, Pastor Stewart, it's about setting aside my rights. If I say I'm a slave to Christ, who is my master? And my master should be um, Jesus Christ. And it says not be argumentative, uh, to be argumentative. I'm sorry. God is not afraid of me arguing with him because he still has the last word. He has, you know, and showing all good faith, me just continually to continue to show my steadfastness in faith with him. So it's like, who are we locked into? And maybe the word is sort of like that word submissive, but bond servant to me is like, I'm tied into the master. And does it mean we're perfect? No, but it means that I know who I'm anchored to. I use that word. Thank you. All right, y'all, this has been a great conversation. Uh, this is a good landing place for us since it's almost one o'clock or I think it is a little bit past one. Uh, thank you all for being able to be here and those that participated and had anything great to say. Um, and um, next week when we when we come up next week, we'll, we'll kind of do a little recap of this too because there's uh, some more specific things that I think in terms of what this actually looks like. And some of you have already mentioned that already, but I think there's some things that I want to tease out a little bit more. But with that, Pastor Stewart, you got any final words? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Again, a wonderful discussion. And uh, for those online, we have, we have uh, in our midst, uh, we have uh, over, over 25 people who are in person. And we thank God for that. And we thank God for those of you online. I pray and fast and focus for the day is the, the second goal. Prioritize knowing and fulfilling our purpose, vision, values, and strategy. When it comes to our prayer list, uh, um, Sister Mina Smith is home and she is recovering uh, from some heart issues. We thank God for her. Um, the Reverend Barry Holly is in need of, uh, of, uh, of long-term care and I'm working with his caregivers and social workers. He's still in the Valley Wise Medical Center. I'm working with him to try to get him into long-term care. A friend of mine, a Bishop College graduate, a classmate of mine, Dr. Gregory, Gregory Hardaway of the Resurrection Church of Chicago, just called me last, he texted me last night, he had been diagnosed with throat cancer. And uh, I saw him when we were there in uh, January and he was it had not been diagnosed. He he just hasn't been able to speak well, uh, very hoarse, but he's been diagnosed with uh, cancer and they're trying to work on a treatment with his voice. So he, um, so of course, a voice is very important to a pastor. So I want to lift him up in prayer and his wife and family and church. Uh, pastor Talley's mother is in the hospital. We want to pray for her. She's having some tests done and we will funeralize <coughs> Sister Hilda Williams on this coming uh, Friday at 11 o'clock. I want to pray for Haiti. Haiti is imploding. Uh, the gangs have taken over the airport. The president can't even get back into his own country. And that was the first democracy of black people in the Western hemisphere. So it has a sense of history, but to see it imploding like it's doing and gangs running the whole country is just very tragic. And pray for our missionary. We pray for the people there, and in the missionaries that are still over there, uh, it's a very dangerous situation, and is in Haiti. Are there any other prayer requests online or in the? Yes, sir, Rod. Uh,
Thank you very much. And pray for the mother of the 15 year old football player who drowned when they were up north. And uh, it's so sad if you read the details about it. The coach, two of the coaches knew he could not swim. Two, they had no business being in that lake. They were not supposed to be in the lake. And three, they left the lake not even knowing he was not on the bus. Mm. That is terrible. <laughs> that is absolutely terrible. And he was an aspiring, I saw the article yesterday, he was an aspiring athlete. He was on the honor roll. 15 years mm. of age, a young black player, had all his future ahead of him. And uh, just gross negligence on behalf of the coaches and the schools. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings of life. We thank you for this lesson uh, that though 2,000 years old almost, it is still relevant. Uh, older men, older women in the church, younger men, younger women in the church, and how we should, as Brother Jesse has so eloquently said, learn from one another and yet respect one another. And so, God, we thank you for this day. We lift up every name that we call those in the hospitals, those recovering from the hospital, those who are bereaved, those who are having challenges. We lift up that mother who's still mourning the loss of her 15-year-old son. Uh, we lift up the, the family that lost a one-year-old to a shooting outside their home, and they have to move forward. We lift up Gaza. We lift up Israel. We lift up uh, our nation. And we lift up uh, Pastor Tally's mother and all those who are in need of prayer. May we be role models as we leave here today. In the name of Jesus Christ, do we pray. Amen. 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 All right.